right, hey, welcome down to the office. Today we're gonna talk about part two, the Witch Easel Should I Buy video series. This is a look at the spreadsheet that I made. So far, this only works on Google Sheets on a desktop computer. Anything on Android phones or Mac phones or even iPads, the sorting feature just did not work. Doesn't mean you can't access the list and still see all the information I gathered, but let's check it out. Okay, so when you get in, you'll see the plain air easel master list. And up at the top are the sortable features. Sorting is pretty simple. You'll see these funnel shapes and next to them, the categories. We have price, weight, mobility, max painting size, tripod or not. Basically, we'll get into what the scale is on these, build quality, style, and accessories or not. So jumping up to price here, I have them in three different sorts. Cheap in that $80 to $150 range, $150 to $300 is the medium range, and it goes up to $600 plus after that. So these are all sortable scales. You hit the funnel, and from here you can choose to either see cheap, expensive, medium, or any mix of these. So say you only wanted to see medium priced easels. You go ahead and unclick those check boxes and hit OK. Now you see that all those other easels disappeared, and all you're left with are the medium priced easels that I listed. It's pretty handy. Say you want to only see cheap easels, you go ahead and Check mark cheap and uncheck the other two. Hit OK, and you'll see the three cheap easels that I have. So if you're very fixated on the budget, this is a super helpful sorting feature. Now mobility, this one's a little tricky. I just kind of went with my gut instinct. Some of these easels I have not used, but let's check that out. There's clunky, pretty sleek, and very sleek. Now if I want to sort those out and say, you know, all I want to see is the very sleek easels, check marks come off on those two. Very sleek is the only checked one. Hit OK. Now we've narrowed it down. So you can at any time reference these different areas and just see them as a list like this. This is already pretty condensed, but if you wanted to narrow it down more, it's easy to come over here. Say you want to not have a tripod. Go ahead and hit get rid of the small tripod. Bang. Now you only need two no tripods. There's the fly on the wall or the gorilla boxes. That's more or less how it works. Now, if you want to go back and undo some of your searching, just go up to these funnels and hit select all and apply that. This one's a sorted one. Select all. Okay. Over here, you can click it. Select all. Okay. So here's again that full 16 easels list. Currently, there's only 16 easels listed. Some of them have more easels underneath the overall wing. Something like the Gorilla Box has several different boxes inside of it. But you'll have to go to their website and you can do more further research that way. But this just gives you a jumping off point. Now, if you go over here and you want to see more details about these, so you're curious about the Open Box M, you can click this link where it says Detailed Easel Info. It opens up over here where there's the open box M, there's a picture to this side of just, you know, again, the open box M has several different sizes. There's prices ranging from 300, $600. And again, this is one of these, I'm gonna give more information in this window. You get the weight where there's, uh, overall, I put it in the light category. Small box is 1.5 pounds, large box is four and a quarter. And that's without the tripod. All of these have their accurate weights listed. Mobility, again, why I put it under pretty sleek is there's older hardware. It's a little clunky, but very reliable. Max painting sizes, I'll list what the limitations are in regards to the painting size. Whether or not it needs a tripod or not, or whether it needs a large tripod or not. Again, those gravity locking models, you really wanna have large legs that bring that height up so you're not bending over trying to reach that box. Build quality, this is where I have it handcrafted. It's made in Wyoming. The style, which we looked into in the other video, can be a little nonsense, but ultimately this is that classic wood look. And the accessories, this is one of those tricky ones. Some of these boxes, again, have storage in them, painting whirling in them. There's lots of different accessories. I'll jump into that in this category and kind of give you some overview of what accessories you can 
plan by. Finally, there's the extra notes. This is just where I just give my own feedback. If I've used the easel, I'll put in some of my commentary there. So if you notice at the bottom of the tab, this is where it says detailed easel info. Go ahead and go back to the sortable easel list here. There's two, two windows ultimately right now. I might add a whole nother reviews section in the future, but this is just what I have so far. So say you wanna sort only by handmade in America. Make sure this saves checked and remove any of these and hit okay. Now you've had your list narrowed down to anything that's handcrafted. We have the Day Tripper, Open Box M, all the Prima boxes, Fly on the Wall, and the Edge Pro. Max painting size, again, is kind of referencing whether you will use this in the studio too. Uh, larger panels can work well for the studio work, but there's also guys like Turner Vincent who make huge plein air paintings. So there's easels in here that are capable of doing both. That's that sort feature. In this sorting block, you can really figure out whether or not you need a tripod or not, either a small one or a large one or maybe no tripod at all. Build quality. So in build quality, we look at whether it's made overseas, whether it's made in America, or whether it's handcrafted in America. The style, if you remember, is whether it's sleek and modern or maybe classy and old school wood look. And lastly, the accessories, whether or not you're gonna need lots of extra things or not. So in the detailed information, you can see more specifically what you'll need, but this will give you a jumping off point there. They're all related to the questions I proposed in the which easel should I buy part one. Now over time, I'm hoping to add more easels to this list and add more information. This is just kind of the version one part of it. I'm hoping you can find this sheet helpful and that the information here can be useful for you guys in some way. If it is, please let me know. And again, if there's easels missing from this list and you really think I need to add some more, let me know because this is just really the ones I could think of off the top of my head. Like I said at the closing of the other video, it's not the easel that makes the painter. So get out there, go painting, and have some fun. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.